Mm, yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh. And Bob? Bob? I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Mm, yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. 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 I tune into the ACCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. Yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Ah, that's my, ah, and I bet you didn't think you was gonna see these faces. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the lab. Oh my goodness, I'm pretty sure that when you woke up this morning, you didn't think that you was gonna see these three faces inside the lab today. Welcome to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Dr. Cavill. My name is Joshua Sims Senior. You see my brother, BJ Jones, my partner in crime, one half and one half of HBCU Nightly Network of the X's and O's. You see our dear brother, our good brother, brother AD Drew down here. Drew, what the deal, dog? I see you down there. Ladies and gentlemen, man, welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 528 of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab radio show and podcast, the show that covering the sports HBCU diaspora all things HBCU sports, the institutions large and small, from the NAI, NAIA to the NCAA. We share the insights and information on the HBCU sports culture and HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU's athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I am your host, your co-host for tonight, Joshua Sims Sr. You see my brother, BJ Jones. B. Jizzle, what's good, bro? Man, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? It's good to be yeah. back, man. <laughs> I've been very, oh look, I've been vacationing, man. I have been everywhere, man. I, I've just been chilling. My wife told me, man, she said, hey, this year you're going to take a real vacation. I don't want to hear nothing about no sports, no coaching, no recruiting, no nothing. Nothing. And that's what, that's what I did, man. But I'm back now. You better not bring up now, Natta. You better not bring up now, Natta thing about no sport. Not now, Natta. Don't nobody say that now, Natta, like you do, Vada. Oh, (laughs) man. I'm back now, man. Brought the article (laughs) on, uh, what was it, Tuesday, Monday. Monday, Tuesday. It was. Talking about Monday. Yeah, man. Talking about the the hunter becoming the hunted. Ooh. Talking about that bullseye that's about this here big Ooh. on the Hornets back down there in Montgomery. We'll get you know we're gonna talk. Later. You know we gonna talk about that. Let me go to my brother Drew. Drew, what's good with it, brother? How you feeling, man? It's just an honor to be here on with you guys, the X's and O's crew. I just hope that I'm the ampersand between y'all two, between the X. <laughs> And the old and the glue that keeps this, thing, this whole show together today, because somebody needs to get between y'all and referee y'all. So I just want to be that little ampersand between y'all two today. Look, Doc left us the keys under the mat. Literally left some food inside the refrigerator, inside the lab. Right, left our lab coats inside the room. Made sure we were straight. Had some instructions left for us, and he put a big old note down at the bottom. Do not tear up the house. Don't tear up the house. That's how Dr. Cavill left it with all of the stuff in there. But I got to make sure I'll be remiss if I didn't do this. We are filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to our KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, Ralph Cooper, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Uh, th- today's episode of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab is po- sponsored by THG Agency, the THG Agency LLC is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics to the world at large. Man, uh, we have an action-packed episode tonight. Um, as you guys are seeing, both BJ and myself, um, we take a, a, a months-long sabbatical during the summer uh, to spend time with family, spend time with friends, to travel, as you heard my brother BJ say, to travel. Um, to literally just move around, man. So this is for a lot of people 
Uh, this is y'all first time you've seen either of our faces in at nauseum like this uh, since what? Early May? B? May. Since May. May. Um, so it's been a minute. It's been a while. Uh, we are naturals, as you guys can see. We can get right back into the groove. But I'm going to go here first. All right? I think it's important for us to go ahead and get straight to it. We're not going to waste no time. I, I don't want to waste the people's time. But let's get straight into it. BJ, you absolutely just opened it up for us. You started off talking about the article that is now live on HBCUnightly.com forward slash news. Please go and check out that article. It's called the From Hunter to the Hunted. It showcases and highlights. What's up, Brother Emmett Jones? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. It highlights the, the growth and maturation of the Alabama State, Big Bama State Hornets football program going from absolute hunter to finish in the SWAC media day with the preseason number one spot as it pertains to the SWAC East. You highlight and you chronicle that growth and that progression as people move and shake. As we're a few Saturdays away, now Sundays, a few Sundays away from Bama State going down to the Orange Blossom Classic. 37 days. These 37 days. 38. Wow. 38. 38. 38 days. 38 days. Because it's, it's 30 days until the uh, until the Miak Swag Challenge. 30 days since, oh, my God, man. Football is right around the corner. I can smell the grass. B, talk a little bit about this, brother. Talk a little bit about how we got from being the hunter to them now being the hunted. And what inspired you to write that article? Because you talked about writing that article for weeks, and then you dropped it, and it was like, oh, snap. Everybody was fully engaged and was reading. We got great viewership on that. BJ, the floor is yours, brother. Man, it was just basically um, being around family, man. My family is heavy hornets and bulldogs. And the question that I got all summer and the question that I'm still getting is, is, is this going to be the year? Is this going to be the year? If, when you look at Alabama State, Alabama State has not won a SWAT title since 2004. This is the 20th year of that SWAT title drought. All right? They only have two SWAT titles in the sport of football in the entire history of the school. Alabama State made that move in 1982 to the Southwestern Athletic Conference. So they've been in uh, the conference, what, 42 years now? Two titles, 1993 um, and 2004. Uh, they've been close a few times. They've been to a few SWAT championship games. People, would, you, I would argue that 2001 probably should have been a title year for them. Um, 2010, they ran into Texas Southern that was uh, loaded. And they couldn't do anything offensively. Um, and they've had some talented teams, but now you insert Andrew Body, who's probably the most hyped. Uh, this is the most excitement Alabama State has had under center since Tavares Jackson. All right, they haven't had this type of quarterback since Tavares Jackson. Um, and you look at Eddie Robinson. People joked about when he was hyped. You know, he was the Rocket Mortgage Hornet. He was, you know, what are they doing? But he built that program. Six wins, went six to five his first year. That was Alabama State's first winning season in almost a decade. He comes back last year, he goes seven and four. And Alabama State did something that they hadn't done in a while. They beat Grambling for the first time uh, in a long time. They beat Southern for the first time um, in a long time. They had a year where they beat Alabama a and and Tuskegee in the same season for the first time in a long time. Yeah. They, they've been able to, to win some games. They played Jackson State in 2021 as close as anybody. Um, you, you know, for, for homecoming, I think it was 22, the 22 yeah. homecoming. They go to Jackson State last year and beat Jackson State for Jackson State's. Homecoming. <laughs> they have some big wins. Now it feels like they've gotten the momentum. And what Hornet Nation want to know now is, is this the year? Because if this not the year, the question is going to be asked, if not now, when? Which leads me to a question. AD Drew, I'm going to go to you. We put that statement out there, and we say that statement in this sport, 
and we absolutely brothers like BJ Jones, like myself, like yourself, Drew, and a lot of our other pundits in in the industry. When that statement is made, we generally write that statement in pen, not in pencil. Drew, what does Alabama State need to show early in the season? September first will be here in no time, but what do they need to show early in the season? That would make the Alabama State Hornet faithful feel like it was okay for us to put this in pen. They got an early slate on that schedule, Drew, and I'm sure you've already got it pulled up. They got an early slate on that schedule that if they're not careful, people are going to be looking around. Back in the day, we used to have these erasers that will let you erase pen. People are going to be looking around for the eraser to try to take pen mark out on that statement. Drew, what do they need to do early in that se- in the season to be able to make people feel a little bit more comfortable about the pin mark that we're writing that statement with? All right, uh, I lost y'all for a second. Uh, you know they got this thing. You know they got these little whiteout strips now. You know you don't even need to use the whiteout that you have to sit there and blow on the way to before you write over it. So. <laughs> Had that White House strip prepared. What do they need to do early? A, you can't lay an egg to Miles again like you did last season. Mm. Point blank. You cannot lay an egg to Miles. You know, in state, division two, you talked about them beating Tuskegee. And they and they and they whooped Tuskegee, <laughs> but you lost to Miles by one. Mm. Can't do that. Can't lose. You cannot lose the state of Alabama. It's just is that simple. Number one, got to beat AM, got to beat Miles, got to beat Tuskegee. You got to be the Alabama state champion. That's number one. Uh, BJ, you, you talked about the lack of success in the SWAC. You act like they had success when they was in the SIAC, brother. You know, <laughs> Tuskegee, Florida AM, and Albany State dominated the SIAC during all those years that Alabama State was in the, in the uh, SIAC. So, Alabama State doesn't have that pedigree. They don't have that tradition. Eddie Robinson is trying to establish that tradition. And they come in preseason number one. Are they number one because they earned it? Or are they number one because everybody has questions about fam you? Because normally mm. you see Whoever was number one last year comes in as the number one the, the following season. That's true. But with, with new head coach, you've got uh almost 30 FCS transfers coming into Florida AM. How they how they gonna mesh together? You had a bunch of matriculation, and a lot of it, most of it was due to graduation, not to transfer portal at mm. Florida AM University. So I question whether Alabama State got it by default because everybody has those questions about a Florida A&M. And to be honest with you, I'm surprised that Jackson State was not voted number one in the East preseason. Mm -hmm. Because I, in in my personal poll, I had Jackson State ahead of both uh, Florida A&M and Alabama State. There's a case to be made for either of those three to be there. Jackson State returning a good deal of those guys. That defense is as good as advertised. I'm going to be honest, it is. New signal caller on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, both sides of the ball with Jackson State. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Two brand new coordinators there. Florida a and reigning national champions. New signal caller, new head coach. New defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator will still be. Coach Henry clearly is still the guy. I think he can be definitely be able to call that offense in semblance. He, he, I don't think he's going to feel the same as Willis Simmons. Though. He was there. He just didn't call the plays. He'll have some resemblance to what that looked like. We don't know if it's going to look the same, but I have enough confidence in Coach Henry to have that offense, that offensive side of the ball clicking. But we just don't know who's the guy at quarterback. We're not sure. And then you hear at Alabama State, and to your point, this is an Alabama State program that, to your point, dropped one to Division Two Miles last year. You've got Andrew Body in, and he's 100% healthy. 
And the last time we saw him healthy, he was throwing the ball all over the place. But that was in the Swag West. And that was two years ago. And that yeah. was two years ago. <laughs> which, which of these will end up being the reason why somebody ends up getting the forward movement in the Swag East and otherwise? And I must say this because there's a lot of confidence for whatever reason coming up out of normal Alabama. Right now, A&M feels like they have just as much and legitimate of an opportunity and chance to win the SWAC East as the three we just mentioned. A&M feels like they got a quarterback returning. They got some skilled players, clearly the best running back, I think one of the best running backs in all of college football. They got a great off, a pretty good offensive line. We don't know necessarily what the defense is going to look like, but if it's a halfway decent defense with that offense, should A&M feel like they need to be in this conversation? Does Bethune play spoiler to anybody in the East? Yes. I mean, all of these yeah. are things that if we think about it, relatively speaking, I personally believe of the three that's in the top, Bethune going to beat one of them three. Yeah. Bethune's going to beat one of those three. Which three? I'll leave that up for conversation. But, B, I'm going to pass it back to you. The amount of parity that we naturally know exists inside of the West, it almost feels like it's just as, if not a little bit more, available in the East. Those three at the top are not signed, sealed, and delivered. I think people feel really good about the quarterback situation down at Alabama State. I think people feel good about the quarterback situation down at Jackson. I think people are still waiting to see what the quarterback situation is going to be down in Tallahassee. But then you do have Bethune right there. You do have AM right there. You do have Valley in the East who, who might catch somebody slipping one day. B, your thoughts about how this ends up possibly playing out. Still got to play the game. Still got to drop the football down. But thoughts about how this could possibly play out. I think one of the things about the, the SWAC East is that um, I feel like like what you guys said was just spot on. Bama State, FAMU, and Jackson State, for all intents and purposes, could be interchangeable um, at the one spot. Um, Jackson State, I have some question marks about. Um, they're revamping their coaching staff, and they, they're revamping the coaching staff and defensively, Jackson State took several steps back a year ago. They weren't the same defense last year that they were that we had accustomed to, to seeing them, them being uh, under Deion Sanders. Now you insert a new defensive coordinator. That's been some more turnover um, defensively on that side of football for them. What does that look like? I know they want to play ground and pound. They got a quarterback that can run it and throw it a little bit. I think he has. The opportunity to be special. Uh, but what does that look like? One of the things that people talk about is that Alabama State hosts both FAMU and Jackson State. Mm. If Bama State can go into that FAMU game with one loss or fewer on October 5th, that might be the most electric environment in, mm. that Montgomery has seen mm. maybe since uh, Labor Day Classic 2017 when they brought back Tuskegee for the first time. It, it's going to be on that type of uh, of level. It, it's going to be next level ignorant. But then when you look at Alabama State's backside of the schedule, and I talked about this in the article, they got a stretch from October 26th to the middle of November where they go Alabama and m Alcorn State, um, I will say it's Alabama and them Alcorn State. Jackson State is in that stretch. Grambling is in that stretch. Oh, and I want to say Prairie View is in that stretch. Hmm. To me, that stretch is going to determine the season for them. Um, uh, along with that, that FAMU football game. But I also think that someone in the East or the West who ain't going to get a party invitation is going to cancel somebody else's invitation. Yeah. And that's when you start looking at Alabama A and M potentially upsetting somebody. You're looking at Bethune Cookman potentially upsetting somebody. A preview getting a win over one of those top teams uh, in the East. Um, I, I think that it's going to be crazy, and to say that we know what's going to happen 
we really don't. Uh, but I, I will tell you this. That first game of the season, you got Alabama State predicted to win the SWAC East. North Carolina Central predicted to win the MEAC. That game is going to tell us a lot about both of those programs. Drew, before we get ready to go to our first break, we've seen now, I think I just counted, how many times I've seen a comment pop up on the screen mentioning these two names with the hyphen in the middle. But you Thune, school on the beach. Yes, Lord. Daytona yeah. Beach to be exact. Bethune <laughs> hyphen Cookman. Alabama State at Bethune is a trap game. Another one. That's five comments I've now seen that have been put up on. There goes six. I see Bethune Cookman sneaking up on. Uh, I'm just saying, Drew, I know that they arrived. But a lot of hype down in Daytona object. Beach. A lot of hype down in Daytona Beach. And it feels like Coach Raymond Woody has that program feeling good. I, I mean, we ain't talking 2009, 2010 good, but they do feel good down in Daytona Beach. And they feel like they really could be in a position to mess around and catch somebody. So before we go to break, Drew, thoughts on your sister school down in Daytona Beach and their chance to possibly – Catch up to somebody in the top three. You mean my? They, they would be a step half sister on your cousin side. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> here's the one thing about Bethune. I don't know if you guys know. I'm pretty sure you guys have done your homework. Bethune has the second toughest strength of schedule on the east side. Matter of fact. That would be the second toughest strength of schedule among SWAC teams. Only two valid. While Bethune has the opportunity to catch people, will that schedule catch up to Bethune? It's a gauntlet. For, for us in the Big Bend area, we hope that it does since we catch them at the end of the season. Because we, we've seen a streak in Bethune at the end of the season. We saw a streak of Bethune for nine consecutive years in the in the twenty teens. We know what it feels like to be on the other side of that. So, uh, speaking of strength of schedule, uh, just something to throw out here on this argument: two easiest strength of schedules on the east side, Florida A and M, and in the west, Alcorn State. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it right there. And with that, we're going to take our first break. Uh, this is Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Joshua Sims Sr., B.J. Jones, and A.D. Drew. We'll be right back after this first commercial break. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and parenting education coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. 
visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot of and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir and pay attention because he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Welcome back to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with your humble, gracious host, Joshua Simpson. My brother, B.J. Jones, is here with me. And we got A.D. Drew in the building with us. Gentlemen, this past week, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference announces the 2024 football preseason poll uh, with 110 points, North Carolina Central and four first-place votes. North Carolina Central finishes predicted and finished first in the MEAC football program uh, as the MEAC breaks it down to Howard. Bison finished with 92 points, also with four first-place votes. Morgan State comes in at third with 80 points with one first-place vote. South Carolina State comes in at fourth with 78 points, two first-place votes. And Norfolk State slides in there with one first-place vote and 50 points with Delaware State, no points, uh, 22 points, and no first-place votes. I'm going to start there, gentlemen. Uh, clearly, we see Delaware State there at the bottom. But one could say that one through five could, con could possibly be contentious, all right? There's enough conversation to go around, and we talk about one through five. BJ, I'm going to go to you first. Matter of fact, no, I'm going to go to Drew first. Drew, I'm going to go to you first. One through five has caused a little bit of a catastrophe conversation-wise inside of the Twitterverse. Um. Uh, Central coming in at one. A lot of people felt like they could see that and understand that. Howard coming in at two. But then it get a little shaky with three, four, and five. Morgan State being at three, South Carolina State being at four, and Norfolk State being at five. I believe Norfolk State led all programs in the MEAC as it pertained to preseason, between them and Howard, as it pertained to preseason, first or second team, all conference play. So, Drew, I'm going to go to you. What in the world did you think when you saw this lineup and how this broke down? I thought bottom up. Norfolk State has 19 starters returning. And they're number five. Just just something to think about. 19, you got 19 starters coming back with you, Norfolk State. You talk about those preseason uh honors. Did you see where South Carolina State got hacked? half of their offensive first team selections on that offensive line. So you're telling me that the team who, if you, if they've got three of the five starting slots, obviously everybody thinks they have the best offensive line, but that offensive line is only good for fourth place. Morgan state, probably the top defense coming back into this conference. Shock the, the shocker to me is that they only received one first place vote. That was the shocker. I think that was more of a shocker to me than them actually being third because I didn't think they would uh bump Howard or North Carolina Central, but I did think they would have gone another first place vote or two. Howard, once again, defending champions, defending champions seem to get no respect this year in any of the preseason polls. In, any conference that we have watched, they didn't get in the CIAA, they didn't get in the SIEC, they didn't get it on either side of the swag, and they did not get it in the MEAC. Whoever won it last year, automatic second. Don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done for me lately? <laughs> what have you done for me lately, man? And then, and then uh, obviously, Central, Central has a chip on the show. The Central probably feels like they blew their opportunity last year. We all know everybody was looking forward to Central Florida a and And I'm not going to lie as a Rattler. It was a little bit of a letdown when we, when we had to play Howard. Uh, even though, we, you know, we still talked our trash. And we, and we well, we tried to handle our business. Howard gave us a run for our money until midway through the fourth quarter. But that's, that's a different story. Uh, the one thing I am going to say about this, Let's think about those people down in Miami. Orange Blossom Classic. You lost FAMU. 
You lost Jackson State was collateral, but you lost FAMU. That's that's the draw for the Orange Blossom Classic. And what do you replace that with? Preseason BAC number one, North Carolina Central. Preseason SWAC East number one, Alabama State. If you're gonna lose FAMU in the Orange Blossom Classic, the best matchup that you could have wished for, if you were the Orange Blossom Classic division. Of the season where neither one of them has a chance to blow that, that preseason away. Right now, uh, shout out to my sister, our sister, uh, Kendra Bullock Majors. Man, they got Kendra Bullock Majors out here looking like Al Heyman, yeah, looking like Al Heyman putting them together. Man, I like it. Uh, B, you know, I gotta go to you. The, the our brother, our dear brother, Markham Banks. Calls the defense at Morgan State God's defense. Says that God himself reach, reaches its hands down and touches that defense Sunday, Saturday after Saturday. But unfortunately, that offense could possibly be considered maybe less than purgatory. I, I'm not even sure if you would consider it to be purgatory. And you brought up a good point. <laughs> what you say? In hell. <laughs> one could say, and Drew just brought it up. They got one first place vote. And I get it. You know, that defense is as good as God knows what. But one could also say on the other side of that, that they may not have even deserved the one first place vote that they got. When you look at Norfolk State getting the first place vote, the value of these first place votes kind of sort of starting to feel like a little bit of home cooking. Be just a little bit of what you think about how this broke down, my brother. I mean, this was bonkers. I'm going to be honest. This was wild. But I definitely want to see what you thought, my brother. Look. <clears throat> Morgan State reminds me of the mid, the early to mid 2000s Alabama AM Bulldogs. Where Alabama AM had like a five year run where they were ranked in the top five defensively, nationally. Mm. But they were on one problem. Offensively, they were like dead last in the swag every year. But they made championship runs because. The defense was so good that it put pressure on you. Well, if you turned the ball over, you threw a pick six, they returned a, a punt or a kick on you, it was pretty much it was over. Yeah. Like, because you weren't scored. Like, it, you, you just weren't. All right? Morgan State reminds me of that, but they don't have – they're not as strong offensively as, as Alabama and the was. And they're not as strong in the special teams as Alabama and the was. And we were trying to see would they address that in the offseason. And I'm sorry, I don't see where they've gotten significantly better on the offensive side of the football. Now, with Norfolk State, I would say that the thing about Norfolk, I would say they lost had six losses last year. Yeah. Five or six losses last year by six points or less. Yeah. I think it was five. Five okay, it's five five losses last year by six points. That's dangerous. Yeah. That's very dangerous. If they can flip that this year, their celebration ball down. If they can flip that, they could possibly be celebration ball down. They have the the the, the roster to be able to do it. Dawson Odoms has, has built that roster. A lot of those guys have been with that program for several years. He talked about last year how you had to crawl, then walk. This should be the running stage. I think this is going to be a crucial year, not only for their program, but for Dawson Odoms as well. Um, but then against South Carolina State, insert Chenis Beer, big fan of his. I want to see what they do year one. I don't think they win the me at, but I do think they make a, a Saturday or two hell on either you guys or Howard. Uh, I, 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 think that they, I, I think that they are going to be that tough. And, and, and this is the biggest thing I got out of me at. 
um, media day. I don't know who decided this, but to have the North Carolina Central Howard game on a Friday mm. and not a Saturday is might have been the biggest disappointment because that was one of those things where people started looking at the calendar and kind of seeing how you can get up there to watch that one. Painful. Blasphemous, man. It's, blasph- it's blasphemous, man. It, feel- it feels like, it feels like, and I get it. The conference wants to maximize on that game. Right now, you have a two-heat race between North Carolina Central and Howard year in and year out as it pertains to football right now. Right now, in the last three seed, this will now be the third season. For the third season in a row, it looks like North Carolina Central Howard is the premier game in the conference. But I want to make sure I, I say this, and I'm going to be honest with you. On the road at South Carolina State, North Carolina Central hosts Howard at home this year. They host that Morgan State defense at home this year. They've got Norfolk State at a neutral site in Indianapolis for the Circle City Circuit City Classic. Those three games right there, if they were in different venues at different settings, I feel a little bit different about that. North Carolina Central takes the fourth longest home winning streak, fourth or fifth. AD Drew, keep me honest on that. Fourth or fifth longest home winning streak in FCS football into those games. I feel good about those games. They won four games in a row in, in NFL venues. Feel good about that game against Norfolk State. South Carolina State down in Orangeburg. On the road. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the air down there. I don't know if it's the bugs. I don't know if it's the fact that we might come into the stadium and smell all that good. I don't know if it's the beautiful Orangeburg women. I don't know if it's, you know, the the nanas that be in the stadium using profanity that throw us off a little bit. I don't know what it is. But for some reason, for the better part of the last 10, 15 years, North Carolina Central in Orangeburg has been maybe our biggest kryptonite. I don't know what it is, though. I, I genuinely don't know what it is. I promise you, it's got to be a combination of the beautiful women that's down there. These young brothers get to see these beautiful South Carolina women down in Orangeburg, about an hour away from the Met in Columbia. You, I mean, it's just a different world. You get to smell all that good food. They be on the grills, cooking it real good, the, the tenderloin. I mean, I promise you, if that's what it feels like, it feels like Orangeburg juju. It's like when they <laughs> see the North Carolina Central buses roll in down, what's that, 85? Or is that Highway 20? Whichever one it is. When they see the North Carolina Central buses come down there, it's like all of the elders in Orangeburg convene together and they play some sort of juju on North Carolina Central. And by the time we get off the bus and get back on the bus, we have no idea that we, we've been in a war. We've been at a fight. And now you add in the special ingredient that is chin is berry. I'm going to let everybody know. The Miak country, Miak world. I love Trey Allen. That's my big brother. I love him to death. Love him to life. That's my guy. But there is not very many more captivating personalities in all of college football than Chinish. I don't know if his middle name is Jerome, but I'm going to call him Jerome. Chinish <laughs> Jerome Berry. Right? Feel like Chinish Jerome. Ain't many more captivating personalities than that. And if they get rolling, if they get rolling, ladies and gentlemen, it could get scary in the Mideastern Athletic Conference, and who we thought was the top two could quickly change. Now, they got to get on the road. They got to go up up 95 when it's cold, and uh, I can tell you guys from experience, we were lucky to get out of that out of that situation, out of that cold tundra one and one last year. That's just my thoughts. Uh, we're going to get ready to take our second break, our final break of the night. Uh, and then we get on the other side of it. We got to talk week zero and week one. It's enough days out for us to start talking week zero and week one. This is Inside the HBC Sports Lab. We'll be right back after this final commercial break. We'll see you on the side. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. 
This Padwick's Gush is 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot of yeah. And who's about, who's about? So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, sir. and pay attention because he gon' teach a lesson. Welcome back to HBC, inside the HBCU Sports Lab with your host Joshua Sim Senior, BJ Jones, and AD Drew. All right, fellas. Drew, I'm going to have you run us off the matchups during week zero, the matchups during week one. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about what we think could possibly happen in these matchups. We are a little bit over 30 days from week one. Right at 30 days, if I'm not if I'm certain, Drew. Right at 30, 30 days, days or so. 30, 30 from days week from week zero. Yes, 30 days from week zero to as of today. And before I get into week zero, you know, you was talking about Chinese Berry. I'm just waiting on one day where there's a press conference with Chinese Berry and Connell Maynard. Oh, and I'm gonna be taking bets on who's gonna win that press conference. Oh. Can we possibly see a South Carolina State, Alabama, A&M? Is, not this is year. that something not we can see year. in the crowd? Not, the, not okay, in the, not just, the celebration ball. I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I, I, is there a chance that we can see that? Is there a, chan is there a chance? The is there a chance that one of these gentlemen are no longer in their job? Let's stay focused. Now, Drew. It's too early in the year for all that now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, man. Is there a chance, hey, man? I'll tell you what about Carmel Maynard. A wounded dog is a dangerous dog. Absolutely. He's coming into the season wounded. Now, hey, I know he better not lose Alabama State again for the third year in a row. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. That's anyway, the that's the, the, okay. Okay. <laughs> Getting to these matchups on week <laughs> <My boy zero>. <laughs> We've got the, obviously, we've got the big matchup. You know, Delaware State travels out to Hawaii mm. in week zero. You know, everybody's looking forward to that matchup. Yeah. Um, bombs over <laughs> Baghdad, ladies and gentlemen. Did I go Delaware State, I love you. No, no, you good. I, I like, I love Coach Hall. We love you, man. Coach Hall, we love you, man. And we hope that you guys can pull off that upset. It ain't like Hawaii's not unbeatable. They not unbeatable. You certainly can take care of business and go down there, Hawaii, get you a nice uh, vacation in paradise, and they take care of business. I hope so. Man, make sure to check clear and uh, enjoy the um, palm trees. And it's beautiful over there. I, I know I had fun when I went to Hawaii. Facts. Um, man, you make sure. Hey, make sure. Young men and women get a chance to go to Hawaii. You, you a 17, 18 year old, 19, 20 year old kid, you get a chance to go to Hawaii. 
man, I take on that. Somebody else dying. On somebody else dying. And you yeah. get to leave and go back with another check. Yeah. I take it. I take it. Go ahead, Drew. All right, but uh the match of the day. And and do you do you guys realize the day that the VX Swag Challenge is being played? Do you realize the date? No. Oh. Eight it's eight twenty four. It's Kobe Day. Kobe Day. Oh, Kobe Day. Kobe Day. Eight twenty four. Oh wow, that's yeah. love! Oh snap, dog! Yeah. So on Kobe Day, Fabu Norfolk State will battle in Atlanta. Mm. I, obviously, uh, this is a match of you know it's been set set since what 2019. Yeah. Fabu uh -huh. in the, the reigning Celebration Bowl champion against the Norfolk State team who's expected to really, really improve. We know that that stadium will probably be about three quarters FAMU, one quarter Norfolk State there in Atlanta, because you know Atlanta is Tallahassee North for FAMU. That's true. But uh yeah, it's gonna it's it's really gonna be interesting. Obviously, I think advantage right now quarterback advantage Norfolk State because I think we know who the quarterback is for Norfolk State. Don't know what the, who the signal caller is going to be for FAMU, although they say we've got somebody that y'all don't know about who can spin the ball. And, and, and Drew, I, I'm, I'm sorry and I will be remiss if I don't. Um, one of the most surprising things to come out of MEAC Media Day was the mm -hmm. fact that the first team quarterback from me, yak was Otto Coon. Otto Coon. And, um, raise your hand if you can remember the last time you saw Otto Coons on Norfolk State's campus. So, not so fast, my friend. We may not see it. And I believe it's on record. Coach Dawson Odom said that there will be a quarterback competition going into camp in Norfolk, mm -hmm. Virginia. But you know, I, I I've always cautioned everybody: if they're not enrolled in summer school, don't count on them being on the roster yet. Just uh -oh. want to give all you, just want to give all these people a fair warning, especially in this transfer portal age that we are in. If they did, are not there in summer school in summer workouts, yeah. unless yeah. they unless you one hundred percent know they out on internship or something along those lines. Don't, don't, don't go. Yeah. Don't Count on, it. on the roster. Just a little bit before we move to week one yeah. on, on the fan on fam you. Coach Cozy, brother, I don't know who told you, but that swag you be coming out there with. I like that swag, brother. <laughs> I do. I like the glasses. I like the swag. I like the way the brother be stepping, man. I do. I really do. What I hope is that you bring that swag to the sidelines and that you guys at least make us believe that you guys are the defending reigning national champions. Um, what I'm hoping Ooh, is going because to if they don't, because if you don't be, it's going to be very loud all season long. You are talking about a Norfolk state squad that was picked to finish next to last. You are the defending national champion. Well, you better act. You better act like it. FAMU has not lost to an HBCU opponent, not named Jackson State, since before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I respect that. I respect that. I like that. I respect that. I like that, Drew. Drew, I feel you, Drew. I like how you just brought that out, Drew. Drew, Drew said, "No, we ain't doing that." Drew said, "You go, you go get this. <laughs> you gonna get a sprinkle of this." Stuff. No, you ain't doing that. That was Listen, good, man. Drew. That was good, Drew. I can't, I can't hear in front, Drew. That was, I feel you on that one, Drew. All right, Drew, let's move on to week one, dog. Week one, a couple of interesting matchups. I'm gonna start off with a not, uh, a non HBCU matchup, a very important matchup on the Division two level for uh potential playoffs albany state travels to valdosta state Ooh. and you know first of all shout out to valdosta state for they always either play albany state or fort valley state seems like every year they play one of those two 
of HBCUs. And uh, why am I drawing a blank? Uh, used to be at Texas Southern, the coach over there at Valdosta State right now. Uh, can't, can can't call him. Uh, can't call his name. Uh, Tremaine Jackson. That's his name. Yeah. Tremaine Jackson. Yeah, Tremaine Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Jackson. It, you know, but him, HBCU alum, love loving him death. Talked to him a few times, but he can't afford to drop this game to an uh an HBCU, especially after what was it last year or two years ago? Yeah. Union, and then for Albany State, Quentin Gray, I mean, you come in predicted to win the SIAC. Well, we want you to do more. If you're going to win the SIAC, we want you to do more than the SIAC. I mean, we cover with Benedict having been number one seeds. You want to be a number one seed in this uh, region again, you need this game. You will not be a number one seed if you don't win this game. Uh, Facts. CIAA SIAC matchup, Benedict Virginia State also. Ooh. Uh, that's a, yeah. Ooh, Doc. That's Dr. The Henry game. Fraser the third. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's the Hall of Fame, NFL Hall of Fame. That is game. the Hall of Fame game. Yeah. I just saw, and I just saw that there's a concert. They're gonna also for those of you who are going to Canton, Ohio that weekend. They're also gonna have a concert featuring, I think, Ti, Yin Yang Twins, and a host of other folks. Seems like it's gonna be a good weekend, man. Shout out to the Black College Hall of Fame putting on that game. I'm, I'm interested to see how that game turns out. Dr. Henry Frazier III has got a squad up there. I'm going to be honest. They feel like they're going to run the table, not only in the CIAA, but that they can make a deep run into the CIA, into the NCAA Division II playoffs. I, I, think, I think that that game, listen to me, record me, click this, whatever you want to do, that game will be the statement game and the coming out party for my boy Henry Frazier three sticks. Thanks. Three sticks. I've never heard that mm. one before. All right. Another, <laughs> another CIAA SIAC matchup. How about Kentucky State and uh, host of Virginia Union? Ooh. Everybody. Union at Kentucky State? Yes. Hey, Jay DeBias, I got his 19th year of eligibility. Jay DeBias, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, sir. It's an encore of the Jay DeBias show, ladies and gentlemen. Get your tickets, get your popcorn. Get your, get your, popcorn. <laughs> get your tickets, get your popcorn. And our last CIAA SIAC crossover match is the Red Tails Classic with Johnson C. Smith and Tuskegee in the Gulf of Montgomery. Look out, Kimmy. Now, here's, Look out, here's the thing about this game. Here's the thing. Oh, my game. goodness. Coach Maurice Flowers of Johnson C. Smith has never lost a Red Tails Classic to Tuskegee going 2 and 0 when he was at Fort Valley. Fort Valley. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, dog. Man, dog, we got to everybody make sure you tune into that game. That's going to be a really good game on a team. I think that is going to win the CIA. I actually think John C. Smith is going to win the CIAA South. Right. I personally, this, right direction last year. This, this is the word of Joshua Simpson. I am not putting this on anybody else. I'm saying it me. I think Johnson C. Smith is going to win the CIAA South, and clearly, Tuskegee should. Should be competitive this year. I don't think I don't know if they win they, the SIC. They've got the schedule in the SIC again. Again, the schedule flipped, it, it just flipped home and away this year. So they do have the easiest conference schedule once again this year. Lord have mercy. One so, who does that's, that's that home? Who does cool Skiggy avoid in the SIC this year? They don't play Benedict, they don't well. play Albany State, mm -hmm. and I don't think they play Fort Valley. I was just about to ask no. that. Do they play no. Fort Valley? No, they don't play Benedict, Albany State, or Fort Valley. Oh, there you go. You got to be kidding me. There you go. You got to be kidding me, man. They might be able to skip the one. <laughs> you mean, jokers. I know they, what y'all doing down there. <laughs> Skeegee, Skeegee has no excuse not to be one of the two teams in the championship game. Absolutely, man. No excuse, nah. man. When they get to championship day, that's a totally different story. But they have no excuse not to be one of the two teams in the championship game. <laughs> if I'm a betting man, and I don't gamble at all, but if I was a betting man, I would pretty much bet right now that I think I would put, I would pencil in Tuskegee into that to the SIEC championship game. But, I mean, I mean no come on, man! You got them three not on your schedule. Oh man, who the toughest team? On, who the toughest team on their schedule now? Then 
outside of Miles, Miles, Miles. Miles. They got Miles. Miles at. They go to Miles this year, right? The, uh, no, because they, they hosted Miles. Miles last year. They host. No, they they went to Miles last year. They host. Okay. They host Miles. They host uh, Miles this year. It'll be the first game when they turn on the lights. Oh man, that's wild. oh man, that's gonna be Your wild. Toughest game on the schedule is at the crib, and you finally get to turn on the lights. Oh man, oh that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, so, Shout out yeah. to Future. All right, Drew, uh, let's keep rolling through week one. Keep, keep rolling. Another uh, one you want to keep an eye on on um, Division Two level. Miles travels to West Alabama. Playoff Ooh. implications on that one. Mm-hmm. So uh, going on down through. Uh, let's see, it's going. Let's go to the BAC. Morgan State travels to Hampton. Mm. Chris Zellis probably that's, probably coming in the top quarterback in HBCU land right now preseason. Maybe I, I mean I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I don't, you definitely make I, maybe you could definitely make an argument for him. Yeah, is Miles yeah. is Miles Crawley still down in is Miles yeah. Crawley still taking snaps down in Grambling? Yeah, uh, Zellis twenty seven. You could put them one eight one B. Yeah, yeah, you can put them one eight one B. But yeah, I feel you. Chris Zellis definitely is in the conversation for best quarterback yeah. in HBCU football. I, obviously, we know we've got the uh, the OBC. Uh, how about week one? South Carolina State traveling to Tallahassee. Family? Yeah. 20-game yeah. home Ooh. winning streak on the line against Chittis Berry, who has not lost a game in 23 games, a regular season game. He won his last 23 in a row. He ain't going to like how that one going to feel. He Something might not like how that one going to feel. Something got to give. Something got to give. And then, of course, we got a, a big old slew of paycheck games going on this particular week. How about this one? Valley and Tennessee State. How about it? <laughs> How about it? Well, well, my boy Mike says, Valley. Valley. <laughs> Shout, Shout out to my boy Mike Washington. Shout out Mike, how, how, how about the Labor Day Classic? PV and Texas Southern. Man, hey. listen. All right. All right. All right. All right. PV walking in there like you. Listen, and PV, you got all of, you got the recipe. You got a recipe that I believe could mess around and have y'all in the SWAC championship game this year. Come into this game half-stepping if you want to. Yep. Play around coming in this game if you want to and think that just because they got Coach Dishman down there, it's his first game as a head, fo- head football coach. He ain't never done this on his level. Go into that game playing around if you want to. Hey, how about this one for you, BJ? Southern McNeese. Southern travels to McNeese. You know, McNeese, we always used to joke McNeese was, when it was a 10-team conference, McNeese was the 11th team in the conference. Nickel State was the 12th team in the conference. So mm-hmm. now the Number thirteen and number fourteen in the conference. What, what about that batch up there, BJ? Um, it's going to on paper. I mean, honestly, McNeese is not the McNeese of old. Um, and we found ways in twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen to lose to some McNeese teams that weren't very good. Um, I think that for this this ball game, this is the first ball game of the Coach Terrence Graves era, and you got a lot of Jaguars on the fence. You know, they support the team. They they kind of uh, on the Terrence Grave Graves higher. He can win this one and win some people over. But I tell you what, if you lose it, he might lose some people that he might not ever get back. Mm. Mm. Great point, uh, fellas. I I I, uh, I don't uh, know, uh, man. Oh, go ahead. I, I was gonna say I don't know. That's a game that for me feels like could be. Coming out party for for Southern, personally, feels like it could be a coming should out party be. for Southern. Should be a coming should out party be. for Southern. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Drew. I was gonna go through the list of uh, paycheck games just for full disclosure. Livingston travels to the University of Charleston, Delaware State Sacred Heart. With uh, let's see how. No, that might Howard. not. That might not be. A, that might not be a paycheck game, though, Drew. Yeah, I'm about to say that one. Like that's a uh, two one double A. Yeah, that was a home home. Yeah, that's a home and home. How about Howard and Rutgers? It's a paycheck game. Norfolk, yep. East, Norfolk, East Carolina. It's a paycheck game. Alabama, A&M, and Auburn. Ouch. <laughs> Bethune, USF. 
Paycheck game. game. Here's one. This is not a paycheck game. How about Jackson State, UL Monroe? Well, that that's not a, a that, that's, that's a paycheck. That's a paycheck. That's a it's a paycheck. That's a one. Exactly. That's, that's, that's paycheck ish. That's a one. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, all corn UAB. That's a Thursday night game. Hey, all corn got a chance. Yep. Yeah. Control the clock. Control the clock. Run the ball. Do what y'all do. We could be right. talking about something completely different. Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Ouch. Grambling, Louisiana. Like, just you Louisiana. Are, you like, really like, they used to be. University yeah, you really yeah. Ain't what yeah, no, they ain't. I don't know. Them, that's paycheckish. That's paycheckish. Yeah. And, and the last paycheck game out there, A&T goes to Wake Forest. Ouch. Ouch. Oh. Ouchie. I, I did leave one <laughs> off. VUL and Wagner. I'm sorry. I, they HBCU. I Let's, gotta, go, I, I gotta go Let's go, VUL. Let's go, VUL. Get that W. Let's go, VUL. Let's go, baby. Let's so, go. <laughs> yeah, that 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 go that goes through the big games on uh that, that weekend. You know, some of those games, we got games starting on Thursday all the way through Sunday that particular weekend. Uh, mm. we, I don't think a lot of people are talking about South Carolina State visiting FAMU, but I tell you what, FAMU comes to Atlanta week zero. If that game is close against Norfolk, or God forbid, if FAMU drops that game to Norfolk, that next game uh, going to Tallahassee with South Carolina State is going to be huge. Mm. Orca, huge. Mm. It's going to feel. It's going to feel. It's going to feel like. It's gonna feel like the walls are caving in. They mess around and lose that game against Norfolk, and then mess around and lose again against South Carolina State. It's gonna feel like the walls are caving in down in Tallahassee. I promise you. I I've been arguing with Brian uh, about this, probably outside of Cornell Maynard. Coach Cozy probably has the most pressure on him out of any coach. I believe you, a hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Because, yeah. and, and when you think about it, the athletic director wanted to hire one coach. The alumni, the board, and everybody else wanted to stay in house. We, you stayed in house. Prove us that we are right by staying in house and keeping you instead of hiring somebody else. I don't think there's nobody under more pressure. Week zero, week one. Outside of Connor Mayer getting off to a good start, then James Cole. Fellas, I think Terrence Graves might be a close second. I was just about to say that. I think for me, Terrence might Graves be a close right second. there, right there, right there. Uh, same, because same, of things that same situation, it's staying in house. Because of, and like I said, because of things that has nothing to do with Terrence Graves. It's the politics of football. Yep. Politics of football, and politics of athletics. We can't talk about politics during this time of the year. You know, you know, we already had our black jobs and how, how, how y'all color the fraternities and sororities doing out there? <laughs> she, this fool really said that on. I really said that on Fox News. And I was like, ain't no way. All right, let's let's make sure we stay focused, fellas. Let's go. To, let's go to final moment. Let's go to a final moment. Make sure everybody gets the last word. Let's start with my brother BJ Jones. BJ, thoughts, my brother. Final moment. You know how we do here on, on usually on HBCU nightly. We go last ten, but here in the, inside the lab, we're gonna go final moment, closing arguments. What about you, B? Let's start with you. Um, been a great summer, man. Has opportunity to attend uh, family reunion, man. Go visit the West Coast. Go visit some other places. Got another trip lined up in New York coming up here shortly. Just being able to enjoy everything. Uh, but the biggest thing is coming back, man. It's only right that we came back and we did it here, right here inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Um, doing this for my good man, uh, Dr. Cavill, who I also call the mad scientist who had the wherewithal and the foresight to pair uh, Josh and myself together. And since that pairing, Josh, I don't call a lot of people my brother, but this is almost like a blood brother uh, to me. 
Uh, we are family. Our families are connected. Our wives are connected. Um, and this all came through because of the brain power of Dr. Cavill. Um, so shout out to Dr. Cavill uh, and his foresight uh, and the wherewithal to be able to see uh, something that maybe that we didn't see. And uh, coming back, man, I'm excited about the season. I'm excited about the matchups. Uh, and I'm ready to get it kicked off. So um, you guys make sure that you are tuning in, not only to the HBC Sports Lab, but us and HBC United. We're getting ready to kick off new season next Sunday, man. Make sure you don't, you don't want to miss it. Jesus and I'm telling you, man, there's going to be some things that are going to be coming across the editor's desk that you want to make sure that you, you got your seat pulled up, that you can get your read on. Um, because, man, I'm going to be having – um, a lot of fun with that um, this upcoming season. And uh, also, man, if you know how we get down, man, me and Sweat Challenge, uh, modern day information to be out shortly. Ooh. <laughs> get yourself ready. Get ready to get your tickets. Let me go to my brother, Drew. Drew, final moments, my brother, closing arguments. Hey, uh, I know this is going to have to be one of your subjects on your first HBC Unitely of the year about the FBS going up to 105 scholarships. And the question I want you guys to contemplate on and have an answer for me when I tune in is how does those, those 30 scholarships, how is that going to affect the product that we are used to seeing with HBCU football, number one, and the fact that now – uh, everything is going to an equivalency sport from what I've been able to see instead of football has always been a head count sport along with uh, men and women's basketball. So uh, give you guys your time to do your homework on that. But those are two questions that uh, I definitely want to hear you guys' responses on when you uh, have your have a show dedicated to that. But I want to take this time, fellas. I want to step away from the sports arena and talk about real life right now. And uh, yeah, we all know what has happened over the past uh, the past week with uh, President Biden not electing to run, uh, Kamala Harris, Vice President Harris being uh, put to the front of the ticket. And, you know, this month has been such a jacked up month where you just want to hit control alt delete on life this particular month uh, with everything that's happened this month. But I just want I just got to say something. I know most of the people listening to this podcast are adults. You know, there's probably very few young college students listening to this uh, podcast. But I want to take this moment and say something. If you have a student, son, daughter, niece, nephew, friend, friend of the family, somebody in your church, whoever, and they're going off to school, especially for the first time, I need you to encourage them to do one of two things. Register and get their absentee ballot before they leave and go to school or B, tell them upon arrival on campus and they get their classes straight to register to vote. I'm not going to tell you where to vote. That's a personal preference, but I need you to encourage them to do one of those two. Either make sure they have their absentee stuff in before they leave and go to school or before if you drop them off, before you get in that car and go back home, take them to the voter registration place in whatever, whatever city that your school is in and make sure that they do that. At, I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm not telling you what to vote for. But damn it, our people did die and have gone through too much for this right for you not to exercise it and for these young people, especially because these young people don't think they really have anything to vote for. Emphasize to them, your vote is your voice. Absolutely. 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 100%. 100% AD Drew. And um, I will say there's some information that's going to be continuously coming out as we go there, as we get closer to uh, the season three premiere of HBC Unitedly. Um, you guys are going to start to see that there's a brand new show that we're going to be premiering on the network that's going to be centered around that particular. This year is the most important. And to A.D. Drew's point, can't tell you who to vote for, can't tell you what to vote for. Only thing I can ask is that you do vote. So all I can ask is that you vote. 
All right, this will be the most important, and you've heard this from either side of the aisle, so it don't matter. This will be the most important election in all of our lifetime. And this election will set the precedent, the precedent, not the president, the precedent for what this country looks like moving forward. Engage in your civic responsibility and your duty. Register to vote. Do what you can. Encourage every single person that you know, love, or care about to do the exact same thing. And let's go out and make sure we vote. And we vote in the interest of what we feel like is best and our, it affects our family and affects our community and affects our people. Uh, for me, man, closing moments is, listen, um, this is an absolute, absolute honor, man. Um, Dr. Cavill, uh, BJ uh, calls him the mad scientist. I call him the general. Um, for HBCU sports and the HBCU sports diaspora, this gentleman who started this show, this is where it starts. Uh, every single limb that comes from that, whether it be the HBCU Nightly Network or every single show that exists inside of this world, you have sat at the feet of the general and you've learned something. And one of the things that he contributed to me is the fact that I got a chance to build a brotherhood with this gentleman right here, right here to the side of me. He said it earlier. We literally are brothers, man. Our, our wives are connected. I drove down to New Orleans this year to speak at a conference. I swung through and stopped by his crib just to see my brother. I hadn't seen my brother, and I just wanted to see my brother. And he just wanted to see me. And his, his daughters are my nieces. My children are his nieces and nephews. We family. Uh, A.D. Drew, anytime he anywhere close, he called. He, hey, bro, I'm in the area, dog. What's good? It's family. And a lot of this is attributed to this doesn't happen without the good doctor, the mad scientist, the general, Dr. Cavill. And so I just wanted to take my moment and take my moment to say thank you, Doc. I appreciate you for letting me come on here, let me and my brother come on here and rock with you guys uh, for the time we have. A little bit of this was us getting a chance to dust off the cobwebs, man. It's been a long break, summer break. Um, and I was super, super excited about being able to do this today uh, because I had a chance, we had a chance to come in here uh, as the duo that you guys have become to know and love we had a chance to come back to the place where it all started and really, really take advantage of everything that is the lab. So for everybody that's listening, for everybody that's watching, Sunday, August the 4th, is the season three premiere of HBCU Nightly. We will go live 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central. That is our new time for HBCU Nightly. We heard your cries. We heard, the, we saw the DMs. We saw the texts and the emails. We will be going on Sundays from now going forward. Expect to be able to sit down, grab you a glass of wine, grab you a cup of soda, some soda pop, grab you some juice, some water, some popcorn, a neutral game, neutral grain bar, whatever it is that you got that you want to eat, some collard green, whatever, and sit down and tune in to us Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, live on HBC United Network. Drew, I know you had something. Yeah. And for all of y'all who tune in to myself and Brian each and every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time, Eastern uh, Standard Time right here on the Black College Sports Network with the Sports Wrap. As soon as y'all get done with us, y'all can switch over to them. So Absolutely. You, you, go get, you can get multiple hours of HBCU sports on Sunday starting right here on the Black College Sports Network and then finishing up with HBCU Nightly on t- on x absolutely absolutely ladies and gentlemen man thank you for listening inside the hbcu sports lab make sure you share the podcast with your friends and our colleagues i am dr i'm not dr cavill but i am joshua sim senior Uh, that's my brother bj jones that's my absolutely you read the script you see what it is that's my brother ad drew uh but we are representatives of dr uh Dr. J. Kenyatta Cavill, the dean of HBCU Sports, coming from inside the inside the lab, and the two college and the College of HBCU Sports. Shout out to our brothers Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Um, you got us here today. We was here. This was an absolute pleasure. We hope you enjoyed. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And Sundays, you open up your Sundays at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. We look forward to next week as we discuss the latest news in the lab. 
Follow the doctor at Dr. Kenyatta Cavill on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Inside the HBCU Sports Lab 1 is on Facebook and inside the HBCU Sports Lab on YouTube. Dream big and continue to move forward. We will talk to you soon. BJ Jones. Of course. AD Drew. Lecture. And you are dismissed. Y'all have a good night. Drive a light, everybody.